Kunzang, renowned fortune teller, on the return of the Tibetans to their native country. I can see five snow mountains. Between the first and the fifth is a snow lion, but the Tibetan flag is visible on the smallest one. A difficult prophecy for a quick return to their native country. 100,000 Tibetans have lived in India for almost 40 years. They have achieved a modest living standard. By Indian standards, it's considerable. The Gondon Monastery, one of the three oldest and most important universities of Tibetan Buddhism. Impressions of a monastic university. The monastery is large. Over a thousand monks live in the Gandhan Chartsa section. <laughs> Preparation for philosophical debate. Only a few monasteries practice this as thoroughly. View of a very special school. Two hours a day. The ritual of questions and answers on Buddhist philosophy. Precise logic at the highest level. These are the three elements of perfect reasoning. The object is created and everything created is impermanent. These monks are desperate because of a conflict with the Dalai Lama. They grant us entry into this temple. At the center of the conflict, the protector deity, Dorji Shukdun. A very popular deity, mainly called upon to increase the power of meditation. It's the patron deity for whole regions of Tibet. It has been worshipped for centuries. Nothing would be more devastating to the monks than having to break the tradition. But this is precisely what the Dalai Lama has been vehemently demanding for two years. He keeps proclaiming that worshipping Dorje Shugden harms the cause of Tibet and that it endangers his own life. Neither of these points can be comprehended by the monks who are well trained in logic. An unusual scene 
inconceivable a few years ago. Monks demonstrate against the government of the Dalai Lama. This man was present at the demonstration. Geshe Punzol Tsutrim is 64 years old and tells us that he's going through the saddest moments of his life. We had asked our teachers to initiate us into the practice of this deity. Now we have either to act against the words of these great masters or disregard the Dalai Lama's ban. I deeply regret that I could not have died a few years ago before this ban. Geshe Lopsong Dundun, 72 years old. On the one hand, we cannot speak with the Dalai Lama. On the other hand, we have no choice but to act against his words. I keep thinking, if only I were already dead. For centuries, Dorje Shugden has been revered by the greatest and most important Buddhist masters, many of whom are the most renowned masters of Tibetan history. One of them was a Dalai Lama's teacher. If the Dalai Lama thinks that all great masters were mistaken, he denies them their qualification as well. They would not be great masters. All the great masters who have worshipped this deity for the past 300 years, were they all wrong? They are wrong. Wrong? Yes. Wrong. That is all His Holiness says about the old masters. a ban that shakes many Tibetan Buddhists at the core of their faith. In just one monastery in southern India, about a thousand monks refuse to comply with the Dalai Lama's decision. Anonymous threats are spread against anyone who refuses to obey his directives. Whoever reveres Dorje Shukden must be targeted and firmly opposed. We must bring them before the public. They have to be killed. Among the targets are two young lamas. We will interrupt their lives and their activities. The disciplinary master of this monastery received the following letter during our visit. You will be dead in seven days' time. After expressing concern about the Dalai Lama's ban, this retired minister was attacked with a knife. He barely survived. Many of the 100,000 exiled Tibetans living in India today used to worship Dorje Shugden, the deity which has now been banned. The family of sculptor Lubsang Sultrim owns two cows and a small field in the southern Indian settlement. They are the only ones who still revere this deity here. Two years ago, there were 33 such families. Social pressure is extremely high within the Tibetan communities. Any contradiction of the Dalai Lama is frowned upon. Three times a day I have to go and check on my wife when she's outside grazing the cows to make sure that nobody has harmed her. We have no friends anymore. Everyone makes life difficult for us. We can't go on living like this. How many times have they thrown stones against our house? A little child sleeps inside. I don't care if they kill us parents, but I'm afraid they will harm our child. Every time I go to work, I'm scared they will kill my child or kidnap him before I get back. At meetings, they all look at me with contempt, even old friends. We live in constant fear. We trusted the Dalai Lama. If he does something like this, how far have things gone? We still live in the Tibetan community, but we don't belong there anymore. They have excluded us completely. 